Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media. We're calling this video Advanced B2B Lead Gen Strategies because it uses some more advanced tools. We're first going to use Generative AI to find our audience's biggest anxieties and concerns so we can better address those on our web pages. Then we're going to use GA4 to find the best combinations of landing pages and traffic sources so we can get those to work for us even a little harder. Finally, we're going to use session recordings and watch videos of people try to fill out our contact forms to see if there's any friction or confusion in that final moment. Ready? Let's jump in. For the next few minutes, we're going to be an AV integration company. We upgrade technology for universities and our target audience is the facilities manager at a university. So to train the AI on our target audience, we're going to either upload our battle-tested ideal client profiles or just use a persona prompt to quickly train the AI on who we're talking to. Results in AI are not very good until you tell it who you're talking to. Okay, if you're watching this on YouTube, go down to the description, you'll find a link to an article that has a, the, the template for this prompt. If you're in the article, you'll see the prompt below. Uh, you'll, and here's how I use the template. Uh, here I am in ChatGPT, it sounds like this. Build me a persona of a job title, facilities manager, at a type of company, university, with certain responsibilities, managing and improving AV systems in classrooms and conference rooms, and what they're really looking for. Help with an AV and technology upgrade. What are they trying to do here? Consider a new AV integration partner. Tell me their hopes and dreams, their fears and concerns, their emotional triggers, and their decision criteria. It comes back with a nice little uh, persona. Uh, it might be missing something. You might have to fix it. But let's assume that this is okay for now. I'm going to copy and paste this out of here and put it into a PDF file. Next, let's look at the page. I just picked a random company. SPL, they do technology integrations for classrooms. Looks like a decent page. To give this to the AI, I'm going to take a full page screenshot of it. For that, I use a, a, a Chrome extension called Go Full Page, which I like to do. This is my favorite way to give AI um, web pages. You could copy and paste the text, but it won't get the UX or the visual hierarchy of the images. Okay, so now I'm gonna download this file. Got the file, great. Now let's go back to ChatGPT and give it our persona and give it the web page along with the prompt. This is the prompt. It's sort of one of those web page audit prompts that we use. Uh, I've, I've uploaded the PDF file. I've uploaded the, uh, I've dropped in the, the, uh, the PNG of the full page screenshot. And I'm basically saying, I've given you both those things. What does this persona worry about when considering an integration partner? What would stop them from contacting someone? And to what extent does this web page address those worries and concerns? List the worries, rate the extent to which the page addresses those concerns, scale of zero to five. It comes back, it's worried about budget overruns, didn't really address that very well. Uh, it's worried about ongoing support, we didn't really address that very well. Uh, it's worried about future proofing, we didn't talk about at all. So maybe we should kind of, uh, we could imagine how we could add that copy to the page and build the confidence with the visitor, helping them understand that yes, we're gonna take care of those things, right? Because one of these little deal breakers might stop them from reaching out to us. Maybe one of our competitors does a better job of addressing that. Let's do another one. What does this persona really hate about searching for AV integration services? To what extent does the page address that concern? Rate that on a scale of zero to five. Boy, this visitor does not like it when you overpromise and under deliver. We didn't really address that very well, but hidden costs is the big concern. Ooh, ooh, we probably should talk about that. Give them some confidence. That little bit of, that lack of confidence might stop them from becoming a lead. What else? Oh, they're worried about the lack of post installation support. And uh, the complexity of the learning curve is also a potential issue. Let's do one more. To really understand the deepest motivations of our visitor, I'm gonna ask the AI to, to summarize that person's motivations for even contacting us. What are the main motivation, motivators? What are the main motivations for searching for a new provider for an AV integrator? To what extent does this page align with those motivations? Rate that on a scale of zero to five. It comes back and does a, and uh, gives us a pretty good sense of that, right? They're motivated by positive feedback, by professional growth. They're motivated up uh, future proofing. Again, we see that same issue. Okay, I've got some great ideas, but before I leave this little adventure into AI, I'm gonna ask it to create a diagram for me or a visual that'll help summarize this all in one little chart. Modern LLMs can do this, which is fun. Let's have it draw us a little heat map matrix. Looks like this. Create a color-coded heat map matrix summarizing the above ratings of the persona's prioritized motivations and concerns. Let's zoom in on this. Super interesting. You can see we did a better job of addressing some of their concerns than others. 
Those two big ones, hidden costs and future proofing, probably this could be a better page, a stronger, more confidence building page with a higher conversion rate if we just go deeper into those topics, as well as some of these two out of fives. Ongoing support, complexity of technology, budget overruns, makes perfect sense. Now we know what to do with the page because we've got an idea, we sort of created uh, a synthetic version of our audience and now we can build a page that's sort of a synthetic version of our best sales rep. The best converting pages emulate a sales call with the top performing rep. Next, let's use Google Analytics to understand the combinations of landing pages and traffic sources that get the best results. Everybody sort of knows that certain landing pages have higher conversion rates than others, and everybody sort of knows that certain traffic sources have higher conversion rates than others, but it's a little bit less common for an analyst to actually go through and map those together and see exactly which combinations of landing pages and traffic sources have the highest performance. If we can find those, then we can make those work even better for us uh, by focusing on those that are getting uh, like the 10x conversion rates. Here's an account that makes a good example. I'm inside GA4. I'm going to go to look at the conversion rate or key, key conversion rate uh, for traffic sources. I'm going to change, here it is over here, session key event rate. I'm going to change this to show just the more, most important conversion, the schedule of demo. Now as I scroll down, I can see, oh, organic search, 2%, uh, referrals, 4% paid. But what about the landing pages for those? It might be very different numbers. So I come in here to landing pages. I'm going to choose the session key event again find the schedule a demo, and I'm gonna sort by key events to put the big ones on top, and I can see that the home page has a, conver a key conversion rate of 3.3.5%. But what about in combination? So I'm gonna to click to add a secondary dimension, we're adding session, source, medium, click to add, and then now as I scroll down, session, key, event rate, much more interesting. The, the key event rate from the uh, organic traffic to the home page is 7%. But the same page from paid is far lower. It's only just over 4%. There's some, uh, some things to ignore in here, such as traffic directly to the contact page. Of course, that should be very high. The person had strong intent to convert. Or sometimes you'll find that the thank you page itself shows up as a landing page, uh, which is something that you should mostly ignore. But look at this one. Wow, albeit from a low baseline, this is a blog post that when it gets traffic from organic, it converts at a very high rate. Super interesting. So what are the takeaways from that? If you've got a service page that's getting traffic from organic that converts visit as a high rate, go keep search optimizing that specific service page. You found your best mousetrap, put your best cheese on there. Help that page get more traffic, it'll work harder. Maybe you've got a directory, a directory that gets a lot of traffic that converts Great, let's go look at that directory listing. How could we make that even better? Maybe we could do a sponsorship in that directory to attract even more visitors from that source. Maybe there's a social media network that's sending people to a certain article. Those people are so compelled that, uh, that they wanna take an action, they reach out and contact you. Let's double down on that social media network. Or the paid combo, the paid traffic to a certain landing page. Some of those are much, much better than others. So don't just look at high conversion rating, high converting pages or high converting traffic sources. Look at that combo and you'll get much better insights. Okay, on to our third and final advanced B2B lead gen strategy. We're gonna look at, at session recordings. I'm gonna actually pull up real videos of people trying to use our contact form and maybe I'll get ideas on how to remove a bit of friction at the very bottom, the last final stage in the marketing funnel. I'm here inside a heat mapping session recording tool. This happens to be Microsoft's Clarity. The other popular tools are Lucky Orange and Hotjar. Uh, I have come in here and created a, a filter to start with to see uh, visits just to the contact form, right? So here I'm choosing path. When the path URL, the visited URL exactly matches slash contact. Great, there it is. Choose that, apply. Now I'm only looking at the session recordings where the visitor touched the contact form. As I scroll down, I can see some that really aren't in my target. They're like different countries. I've actually already favorited one here, so we'll take a look at that one first. Uh, so I click on that recording, and I'm just gonna click to watch that. Now, for privacy reasons, of course, it removes all num all of their, all the information that they're submitting. In fact, it kind of uh, blurs out all numbers, but I can watch them literally fill out the contact form. If you haven't seen one of these lately, it is fun, it is scary, it's exciting to watch people actually take action. This is the moment where the lead is born. So watch, they're filling this out, basic stuff. 
Uh, we do web development. So there's a little field there where it asks you what your website is. There's another field we added recently, which says like, how did you contact us? There's a, what do you need kind of field where you can see this person's actually leaving the tab and coming back and then copying and pasting in probably some summary from an RFP. And then they click to submit. What happens next? Nothing. Wait, what happened? Form validation. Wait, ah, uh, oh, the how did you hear about us form didn't, didn't accept it, right? It said that field was required. What happens next? Nothing happened next. The visitor left. That was it. No lead. <laughs> they did not fill out the, they didn't try again. So uh, watching a few of these, it's like the shock and horror of like, oh my goodness, like how did I make this more difficult than necessary? Uh, it can be very triggering. Take a deep breath, take a moment, watch several of them before you jump to conclusions, unless it's an obvious bug. We don't A-B test bug fixes, just fix it, right? If you see an issue, there's a, the, the validation is kicking back an error, or there's a field that's required that shouldn't be, or people are struggling with something, watch it on mobile, watch it on desktop, see how that works. That is the bottom of the funnel. That's the moment of truth. That person is literally trying to reach you. So absolutely worth a minute of conversion optimization on that. Uh, nothing worse than the B2B lead dying at the very last second, right at the finish line. That was fun, really interesting. Lots of interesting tools and perspectives. Uh, we use generative AI, we use GA4, and then we use uh, session recordings uh, to improve B2B lead gen. Hope you found this interesting. If you need help with B2B lead gen or conversion optimization or search or web development, reach out anytime, orbitmedia.com. Um, and then uh, if, I hope you like this video. If you did, feel free to share it with any other B2B marketers that are struggling to create demand. Again, Andy from Orbit Media, we'll keep making these. See you next time.